In this question, we're asked to um, analyze whether attending lectures has a positive effect on exam performance. And we're going to do that through um, looking at this data set on um, college students, which I'm just loading up to Stato right now. So it's a data set on um, students and their class attendance and exam performance. I have here 674 observations of 11 variables. Our two main variables of interest here are attend, which is the number of lectures of a given course that each student attended out of a maximum of 32 of a given term, mm -hmm. and a standardized final score, which is the, um, the final score on the exam of the particular course that we measured attendance um, for each student. And this is a standardized variable so that it has mean zero and variance equals to one. So in item A, we're asked to um, run a simple uncontrolled regression on the final score on attendance and analyze what the effect is and whether the effect is large or small. So I'm gonna use the standard state of regression command to regress standardized final score on attendance. And I'm going to add this extra option here, robust, um, that makes the standard errors robust to potential heteroscedasticity in the data. So when we do that, our result is uh, this positive coefficient of 0 0.0278, which means 2.8% of a standard deviation uh, it's not very big in magnitude. 2.8% of a standard deviation is definitely not a lot. And, uh, but it's significant. It has a p-value of very close to zero and a t-statistic of uh, around four. So, so what we can conclude is that uh, on this regression, attendance has a positive significant effect on uh, standard uh, exam, standardized exam score, but the magnitude is, is quite small. Right, so uh, item B asks, what is your main worry about the uncontrolled regression A and how would you address this? Our main worry here is definitely selection bias uh, because we have uh, there's a bias in who attends the lectures in the first place, right? So, so if you think about, uh, there's omit, there are omitted factors here which are going to affect both lecture attendance and exam performance. So if you think about, for example, uh, level of effort or student's ability, um, if a student puts more effort into the course, uh, they're going to um, probably try to attend more lectures and they're also going to stay harder and then probably do better in the exam but they're not doing better in the exam because they went to more lectures per se, but because they studied harder. So, so, so this number here, 0 0.0278, uh, is capturing more than just the effect of attendance. And so probably we're actually overestimating uh, the effect here. And how do we address this? Well, uh, the best way to address this would be to add uh, controls that account for these factors that we think might be missing. And that's exactly what we're asked to do in item C. We're meant to uh, test three potential controls and um, describe whether they are good controls and solve the issue that we've just discussed uh, and uh, whether they create additional problems and whether uh, when what happens to the coefficient on attendance. So the first control that we're testing is uh, term GPA, which is the, um, the GPA of each student on the current term in which they take this test. And first of all, is this a good control? Um, the answer is not really. Uh, because for various reasons, and one of them is the fact that the outcome variable, which is a uh, standardized final exam score, is a part of the term GPA, because GPA is calculated taking into account all the exams. So our outcome variable is a part of our control. That doesn't really sound very good. Uh, also, um, there is an effect of attendance on term GPA, uh, a causal effect of attendance on term GPA, uh, through the same channels that it might have on uh, the final exam score, which is our outcome variable. So for example, if you think about a student that gets ill for a period of time, they won't attend any courses. So that will have a negative impact both on the final exam score, which is our outcome of interest, and in his, his or her overall term GPA, right? So, so actually, if you think about, uh, yeah, that, if you think about it, that's definitely not a good control. We're going to run the regression anyway, and we see that now the coefficient completely flips direction, which is um, not that plausible. And uh, it's now negative of larger magnitude than before and very significant. And, 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 and if you think about it, this number here, it means the expected increase in final exam score, given that uh, term GPA is constant, right? So, so, so actually, if, if you think about it, if you keep uh, the same term GPA and attend less lectures, that means that you're probably a better student or you're putting more effort, right? Because you manage to keep the same level of GPA going to less lectures. So that's definitely not the effect we want to measure. So this is not a good control at all. Our second candidate is um, the GPA uh, calculated using all the terms until the previous term. So prior GPA before the start of this term. 
Now, this is a better control because it does not has it does not have any of the issues of the current term GPA. There's no effect of attendance of on, on this term on GPA on the past, right? Uh, so, and also it can be used as a good proxy for um, potentially for a student's ability and also for students' uh, general level of effort into their university studies, although not particularly in this term, but just in general. So we're gonna run this regression here and we see that the coefficient is now zero. I mean, there's a negative sign here, but this is a very, very small value and it's also very non-significant. It's p-value 0.8. So basically this regression says that there's no effect. So, um, so that, that also agrees with our uh, our first conclusion from this exercise on item A, which was that our first estimate of uh, 0 0.02 was an upwards estimate. Actually, when we control for something that is a better proxy for students' ability, we have um, we have zero effect, right? And our third candidate is um, ACT, which is the score uh, of each student on this course to entry on this exam uh, that. Um, makes people that uh, test people whether they can go to university or not it's like a university entrance exam so so that is another candidate control for um for our regression and and it's uh it is potentially a, a, a decent control it does not suffer from all the uh, severe endogeneity issues of current term gpa and it might be somewhat a proxy for for student ability but but actually like it's the effect of an exam that happened a long long time ago and uh, we don't really have data on when that happened. It can have been many years ago. And also, um, it doesn't really measure effort in the university studies. So, so it's, it's not that good of a control as previous GPA, but also doesn't cause really any harm on your regression in the same way that the first, um, the first candidate control, the current term GPA does. So if we run it, we, yeah, we, have, we definitely still have some, some selection bias here because we're not controlling for the, for the effort that students exert. And... Uh, so the selection bias and the upwards estimation remains. In fact, it's even bigger than uncontrolled regression, 0 0.037, with a very, very low p-value, so a significant effect. Right, so the last item, item D, asks us to choose uh, our preferred uh, regression form, given all the discussion that we just had. And, um, and my answer to this is adding both ACT and prior term GPA as controls is probably the best we can do with these three candidate variables. Definitely not term GPA as it causes um, a lot of issues related to endogeneity. So we should not use that one, but ACT score and um, prior GPA can be good proxies for omitted factors such as student's ability and student's effort level. So let's run this specification, standardized final score on attendance, prior GPA and ACT, robust standard errors. And then we can see then that the effect of attendance is now positive and significant and smaller than our first estimate. So that's now 1.7% of the standard deviation, which, um, which makes sense with our story of previously um, un overestimating the effect. Now we have a smaller number when we add more plausible set of controls. So that's probably the best regression we can do um, given the three uh, candidate controls that the question proposes. Thank you.